Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. Today in the F16C, it's September 2020 and we now have HARM's first implementation in this aircraft. We have only one mode at the moment, HAS, HARM as sensor. First, a look at the scenario. Here's an F-16, we've got it in pause just so we can sit and talk. And directly in front of us is an SA-6 site with a combined SA-6 track and search radar and a non-emitting launcher. To our right, by about 23 degrees, we have an SA-3 site with an SA-3 track radar. As a search radar, we have a generic SRP-19 and a non-emitting launcher there. And off to our left, about 20 degrees or so, we've got a book site. We've got an SA-11. Uh, we've got a command center there, because why not? We've got the search radar there, SA-11, and we've got the launcher there, which I believe actually emits. Let's get it set up first. Air to ground mode. In our SMS, we can see we have ready two times AG88, it's our only ordnance at the moment, and we can power them on. Stations three and seven. Let's get back to the HAD for situational awareness. You can see the SA3, the SA6, and the SA11 on the HSD. Over to our left MFD main menu weapon, which is where we're going to be working from. Quickly just showing the HUD, we have harm selected here and our status box there let's go through our symbology our mode here currently harm as sensor and that's all we have next table we can cycle through up to three tables if the screen is soy currently not soy so we can use dms down to make it soy and then we can use tms left to cycle through the tables each table contains up to five different emitter types in this case an sa10 a big bird a clamshell an 11 and a snowdrift and we can see other emitter types here. The reason we've got tables is because the system can only handle searching up to a maximum of five emitter types. So that means you have to know roughly what you're going to be facing. And that gives us an immediate problem because our three different SAM types, SA11, SA6 and SA3, are split over different tables. Well, we can configure the tables. So if we go to table three here we've got an SA3 we've got the P19 or a search generic search radar there SA6 SA2 we don't need and the Strela 13 we don't need so we can bring the book the snowdrift from the book and the launcher emitter and put them there and there to do that we're going to click UFC bring us up to the UFC on the DED we can show harm table three we can use the incrementer to go to table one two and three as thus we're going to get to table three the table has types one to five there and a three digit code which corresponds to which emitter a list of emitters will now show on the screen and will also be in the video description i want to change emitter type four and five to the snowdrift and to the other sa11 emitter so dobber down to there i'm then going to type in First emitter we want, which is 115. Enter, dob it down. And we're going to go 107. Enter. We're done with here now. To be expert at this, you really have to understand your different types of emitters. I mean, it's, to be good at DCS anyway, you have to understand your emitters. So it's just something you're going to have to do. We've now got the SA11 emitter here and the SA11 snowdrift here. There is another way of getting to this DED screen here. If we were to scramble it by just returning, then we could click list and we could go zero for miscellaneous and then we go zero for harm. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but you can. And notice that while we've been away, in our status box has been populated by two emitters, a SA3 on the left and a SA6 search track roughly in the center. And the key there is that it takes time. It performs several scans. Each scan takes a certain amount of seconds to show this particular scan that we've got set up if i went to reset scan we can see here this scan is going to take about 90 seconds also we can show here how many scans we've run currently we've run 15 scans since we've been doing this tutorial to run a 90 second scan in a modern fighter jet is a long time you can see an sa3 is repopulated and so we may want to optimize that search we will go and do that in a second before that we have to understand our, our kind of scope view here this is bore sighted this is relevant to where the harm is pointing that's where the harm is pointing in the middle here that is off right 10 degrees 20 degrees 30 degrees left 10 20 30 up we believe that's 10 there's no documentation for this and down we believe that's 10 20 30 40 again no documentation so we can see that picked up so far on the 90 second scan is a 
SA6, which is A. That means it is actively searching at the moment, but not tracking. In azimuth, it's in the center, and down, it's down 5 degrees or so. The SA3 is 23 degrees to the right, and down about 5 degrees. It is actively searching, but it's not T tracking it. And we've just got a snowdrift that's popped up in our 90-second search. It's on the left by about nearly 20 degrees or so. It's down about 3 degrees. We've got no range in this, but I can tell it's further away because this guy is down 5 degrees. That's guy down about 4 degrees. That guy's down about 3 degrees. And that corresponds to what we can see in our distances there. So now that we understand how this view works, let's optimize it. Let's say, for instance, in our role play, our job was not shooting the snowdrift, it was not shooting the SA6, we only wanted to get the SA3. Well, what we can do in that case is define exactly where we're going to search out of this scope. So currently we're on Y, so it's going to search 30 degrees left, 30 degrees right. Let's go to center. It's now searching just in the center, only left 7.5 degrees, right 7.5 degrees. Again, those dimensions are not documented, that's just what we've measured ourselves. Note that this vertical scale has changed as well, so about 4 degrees down is showing there. Note that by refining the search like this, the search time is much less. We're now down to 22 degrees if I were to, 22 seconds if I were to reset search. Try another one. We can go to left bias. We're now just searching left of the ball site of the harm. And that's 5, 10, 20, 30, 40, th uh, sorry, 30 degrees there. 5 degree increments. And we can go right. And we're now right bias up to 30 degrees. Reset the search and it takes 44 seconds to search the right 30 degrees. And you can see it's picked up the 3A there at 23 degrees to the right. In our makeshift scenario, that's not quick enough. I want it quicker. Well, then let's filter out which emitters we don't want to look for. In this scenario, we know it's going to be an SA3 to the right. So search, filter out SA6, 11, snowdrift, back to has. Reset search. We've now got a 17 second search, which is about as good as we're going to get in this scenario. And this is a good time to quickly look at the buttons. DMS down to change the screen to soy. Weapon release to fire the weapon. RDR cursor switch up, down, left and right to slew the cursor around. TMS left to cycle the tables. TMS up to gain a lock. So next let's prosecute and we're going to stay in right bias here just to show that we can do that. So we're going to unpause, head towards the hostile. Kinematically this missile as you all know by now the ATA is dependent on our mothership speed and altitude. The faster I'm going the higher my altitude the further this missile will go. Remember we've got no type of ranging with this missile at least in has mode. We have to be clever about when to launch it. One tactic we like to do is to move towards the SAM that we're targeting. Wait for him to track us and all fire him missile at us. Once he does that, we're pretty sure that we're going to be in range to fire at him. It's what I call the old iron hand te technique. So in this case, with the right bias, that is the ball site. That's where our missile or airplane is pointing. It's currently about, I don't know, six degrees off to the right, about four degrees down. Uh, we've got a spike. Uh, the SA-6 and the snowdrift, the SA-11 tracking us. I'm just going to ignore them for this example because I just want to show shooting at this uh, SA-3. This SA-3 is a bit of a lower range in an older system, so it may take a little longer before it tracks us. Okay. We are now being fired at by the SA-6. Just ignore that. Most importantly, we've been tracked by the SA-3. We can tell that because we've got 3T, 3 track radar, and we can probably bet our bottom dollar that he's probably fired at us as well. So we're going to iron hand and fire at him. I'm going to unpause, check our left screen is soy, which it is. It's got the box around it. Slew to him, TMS up to lock. We know that it's pretty much on the nose because we're right biased. That is uh, our ball there. I'm going to fire. Magnum. It's fire and forget. So <laughs> he has fired it. Look. I'm going to turn away now. Do some evasion. Run away as fast as my little legs will carry me and try and find our missile. There he goes. Yep, that's got him. So that should bang the track radar. That's what we fired at. And that is there. And there's a three track radar. Hopefully I'm safe, and I am. That is Harm AGM-88C with HES mode at the moment. To let you know when there's any more changes. I hope that's useful, and I'll see you later.